Hi everybody, Dawn here from the International College of Energy Healing and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is all about spirit guides. What I believe they are, how, how to work with them and an introduction to a couple of my guides. Now, when I was developing as a medium, I didn't know anything about spirit guides. I'd probably heard of the term, but really hadn't explored it or wondered what they were, they were uh, all about, really. But that was until I was meditating one day. Now, it was my usual regular meditation, not really meditating for anything other than the feeling of inner peace that you get from a deep meditation. Only this time, I grabbed a piece of angelite. It was this one. Now, angelite is good. It's a good crystal for raising your vibration. It's for helping you connect to your guides. I didn't know that at the time I'd been gifted this piece by a friend. And I felt drawn to hold it when I meditated um, just a, on, on that day, really. Now, I had a routine. I would sit in an old chair that used to belong to my dad. I'd close my eyes and I'd focus on my breath. And as I was relaxing, I'd visualize myself walking through kind of long, swishy grass to, to reach my tree. It was a huge, old, wise uh, oak tree. And I would sit uh, beside it with my back to the trunk. The journey to the tree was always the same, me walking through a meadow of swishy grass that really reached up to my, my waist. Now this time I was wake, making my way across the field and I was aware that somebody was following me. I could kind of hear footsteps and the sound of the grass moving behind me. It was really strange, it never happened to me before. So I turned round and I found a tall blonde man striding towards me with purpose and this I know, as I say, I'd never seen that before. It was Now, it was quite a shock, but it wasn't frightening. I saw him clearly. He had a pale cream long shirt on. It was open at the neck with kind of lace uh, crisscross to close it over. And he had a skirt of leather panels. Now, this is the best picture that I could find to show you, but the shirt wasn't red and the leather panels were all around like a skirt. On his wrists, he had small leather bands and his shoes were similar, but a bit more strappy and crisscrossy. Now, I've never seen him in full armour. Occasionally, I've seen him with a helmet on, a bit like this, in kind of leather, and certainly not the ones we see with the feathers, and sometimes with a short, broad sword at his waist. So I was surprised to see him striding towards me, and he had a big grin on his face. I always laugh and say, you know, that he's really good looking, and he likes it when I say that as well. When he got up to me, I asked who he was and he told me he was my gatekeeper. Now, I'd never heard of that term ever in my life, so I asked what one of those was. And he told me that a gatekeeper was a guide who kept the person safe when they were communicating with spirits. He went on to explain that I'll be working with a range of energies and there wouldn't always be positive ones, so he was there to, keep, to help keep me safe. I told him that I was strong and he agreed, but he also said that he needed me, he ne I needed him to watch my back. And that's exactly what he does. When he's around, he stands with his back to my back looking out. Literally, he watches my back. On some investigations, he's even been seen by people as a large shadow looming over me. There it was, I now had a gatekeeper. He went on to tell me that his name was Septimus and that he had hung me in a previous life, which is why he was working with me now, kind of, you know, karma, repaying a debt. And Septimus has been with me for over two decades and he was very instrumental in bringing forward a second guide. After about 12 months of working with him, he told me that this other guide will also be working with me. Now, he is a small, older gentleman, um, uh, Chinese from um, Mandarin. He's very wise and he's a bit snippy. His name is Po. And when he works with me, it's on a more spiritual level. He's guided my evolution and my growth over many years, pushing me and prodding me to step into my intuition and my spirituality. He is the one who challenges me to do better. And he's the one who pushed me into teaching when I didn't feel like I was ready and he's definitely more in the background. Now he does appear from time to time when I'm teaching, particularly when I'm teaching Reiki. I also have a healer guide. He's male, but I've never seen him and I've never talked to him. It's more of a feeling that I get with him and sometimes it feels like he sets me aside and it's him that carries out the healing session. So that's my story with guides. So what are they? Well, I think there are many ways to describe a spirit guide. 
For some, they talk in terms of guardian angels, archangels. For some, they're family members. For others, they're ascended masters, goddesses, animals and trees. And for some people, this wisdom is part of us. It's a manifestation of our soul wisdom. Now, in reality, I believe all those things to be true. Basically, a spirit guide is a higher vibrational energy that's able to provide advice and assistance in any situation. Guides are aspects of us and always there to help in any situation and planting a thought to, ass to assist us in keeping us safe. And we do have a team of spirits that are willing and able to help. Now, many people believe that you have to ask um, a guide to help, and I do believe that up to a point. However, I wasn't aware that I was asking for a guide when Septimus showed up. So I also think they appear when it's the right time for us as well, or we're in a lot of need. Having said that, I think it's good to develop a relationship with our support team and actively reach out when we are in need. I do feel immensely blessed to have guides in my life, and I've worked with many people to try and help them to develop a similar relationship with their guides. At the end of this video, I will take you through a meditation designed to try and help you to make a connection. But before that, I'll share with you some of my tips for making a connection. So let's start with what gets in our way. So it's our ego mind. It can be disruptive in the whole process. It questions everything and it believes it knows what's best for us. The ego is that little voice inside you that's the source of worry, anxiety and suffering. It inspires self-judgment and judgment of others. Its job has always been to keep us safe. Now, this was really helpful when there were so many things that could literally kill us, like a saber-toothed tiger or two. But in modern times, it's lost its job, but still needs to feel important and useful. So there it is, constantly pointing out the things that we should or shouldn't be doing. Our ego mind fears losing control, and therefore this Part of us also fears opening up to spirit. Our ego mind keeps us small and in fear. When we open up to our soul, our spirit guides, we have access to immense wisdom. We have instant support and guidance that comes from a place of love. Our ego mind has a low vibration. Our soul and our guides offer a high vibration. So how do we recognize our ego mind from our soul speaking or our guide speaking? Well, they speak in the present. When we're fully present in the moment, we have a much better chance of hearing our soul and our guides speak. Our ego mind miders about things that happened in the past or worries about things that might happen in the future. Our soul or our spirit guide speaks to us when we're in the present, in our body and in our mind. Our soul and our guides enter into our awareness through our body. So being aware of tingles, pressure and warmth are all part of the process and ways in which our soul and guides speak to us. We will be taking some time to get present in our body later, so perhaps we can feel the presence of our guides. Another way of a being that gets in the way of us accessing this wisdom is busyness. You know, we're pretty much hardwired to take action. Whilst our brain has evolved, there are times when we don't engage it and we revert to our old reptilian brain based on sensation and impulses. Do I want to go towards this or run away from it? Basic fight or flight survival mode. Now, when we engage our limbic brain, we get to experience the world through the language of feelings and emotions. And if we engage our prefrontal cortex here, then we're able to go deeper and investigate the motives of why we want to do something. And it's through this awareness that we're able to fully see the ego mind and the soul mind. So in order to do this, we've got to build in a pause and be present in the moment. A good friend of mine coined the term walking awake. She could see many of her clients routinely going through their days, responding to perceived threats and slights without being present. Her description reminded me of a zombie and it stuck with me. Our soul and our guides want us to live a good life full of happiness, joy and love. The soul mind is about growth and expansion and being in the flow with no resistance. It seeks unity and diversity with no competition, just win-win. When we're speaking the language of spirit guides or our soul, it's focused on love and compassion, no judgment. 
On the other hand, our ego mind is all about judgment and fear. And that's probably the easiest way to spot whether you're being guided from your soul or your ego mind. So now I'm gonna take you through a meditation designed to make a connection to your guides, or if you prefer to make a connection to your soul. You'll need a journal and a pen or some paper and a pen and some quiet time. So you may want to come back to this meditation when you have the time to do it. And I probably don't have to say this, but I will. Don't undertake this meditation whilst driving or operating heavy machinery. I find that sitting upright is the best way to meditate rather than lying down. One obvious reason is that if you're like me, you'll fall asleep. But sitting upright helps to allow energy to flow. We can align our chakras and we can sit up straight in our chair so there are no kinks in the energy and it can all flow. Now when you're ready, I invite you to close your eyes. Quieten your mind and find your heart space. Center your energies through your breath, breathing deep and evenly in through your nose and out through your mouth. Taking some nice deep breaths in now. With each breath, feel yourself relaxing and going deeper into meditation. If your ego mind surfaces, acknowledge the thought. Thank your ego mind and tell it from now you're setting aside the thought and you'll come back to it later. Let it go. Keep breathing deeply in and out. Letting go of tension and worries. For now, this is 10 minutes of quiet time for you. Time where you can connect. Time when you're going to build a partnership with your spirit guide. Relax your body with each breath out. Allow your muscles to relax one by one. Starting at the head and the neck. Feeling the muscles relax. Relaxing your scalp muscles and your face muscles. Let go of any tension that you're holding in your jaw. With the next breath out, drop your shoulders and relax your muscles. Relaxing the muscles in your chest. Taking a deep breath in and just letting the chest relax on the out breath. Allowing the muscles in your arms and your wrists and your fingers to relax. the 
the muscles in your stomach and feel yourself sinking into the chair. Allow it to carry your weight. Rest your back and relax. Letting go of the tension you're holding in your hips and your buttocks. Feeling the seat of the chair holding you. Relaxing the muscles in your thighs, your knees, your ankles and toes. Feeling fully relaxed as you continue to focus on your breath. In. And out. Feel the energy in your heart space expanding. Allow yourself to tap into the vibration of love. Feel this energy growing and expanding all around you. And if you can't feel this energy, you might see it as a color. you might feel something. Whatever your experience, just know that with each breath, your heart energy is expanding and raising your vibration. Feeling peace. Feeling relaxed, feeling love. When you are ready, imagine your spirit guide is standing behind you in light body form. Ask it to place its light body hands on your shoulders. Become aware of the sensations in your body. You might see, feel or hear your guide or not. Just trust the process. to be open. Ask your guide to step closer and to make their presence known in a way that you will be able to know that they are there. Ask your guide to give you a message. You might see something in your mind. You might have a feeling. You might hear something. Or you just might know. Again, be open to the process. Don't get frustrated if you don't get anything. That will create resistance. Stay open and focus on your breath in and out.
thank you guide for being present and allow them to step back sit in appreciation for whatever occurred Bring your awareness back into your body. Focus back on your breath. With each breath in, feeling yourself become more present. Feeling yourself come back to the room. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And let it out through your mouth. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Stand up, stretch. Stamp your feet and ground yourself back into your body. So now you've come um, around and back from the meditation and when you feel ready, write down the message and see if you can expand on it by writing what comes to you. No filter or review, freely write down what, literally what flows through you. And when you've finished, review what you've written. Then make a list of questions that you'd like guidance on. Use the phrase, what do I need to know about? Or what do I need to do in order to? Or help me understand. And again, write anything down that comes to you. No filter, no review, just free flowing. And when you feel like you're forcing it, stop. Put down your pen and review what you've written. You also might want to drink some water, particularly if you went deep into a relaxed state. And now this is the fun part. For the next several days, I want you to be very present. I want you to be aware about what you hear and what you see. Listen to what people are saying to you, all the conversations that you overhear. Your soul body and your guides will be finding ways to continue the dialogue and to answer your questions. Clarity can come from the most unusual places, so pay attention to headlines, advertisements on buses, car bumper stickers, whatever. Again, the soul and the spirit will be creative in how they uh, respond to you. Also, listen to the things that you're saying to other people. Maybe you're providing some advice and guidance or you find yourself in a conversation with somebody and you say something that might surprise you. Again, take note as this is another way that your soul will be speaking to you. You'll be amazed how ingenious your guides and your soul is and how they communicate with you. So be present. Now, finally, I want to address a few things that people say to me about their guides. Some people are dismayed because they can't get a name for the guide. And this doesn't matter in the slightest. Just because humans choose to label um, themselves in this way, it doesn't mean that our guides want to be labeled in this way. So maybe they prefer to be a color or a feeling or a symbol. I also hear people grumble because they can't see their guide. This might be to do with how you process non-physical information, or it could be the, uh, the guide's preference. Remember, I've got a guide that I've never seen, but I know when he's here and I feel no need to bring him into visual form. Maybe you have a feeling that you get when your guide is present. Maybe it's a thought or a sound. Again, don't feel like it's got to look any one way. So the whole point of this is to develop a relationship with your guide and build your confidence in knowing that they're there and they want to support us. And finally, I want to remind you to be open to their support Ask them to help and stay open to the ways in which they can answer you. And remember, they come from love and compassion and have your best interests at their core. 
If guidance you're receiving doesn't reflect that, the chances are that it's your ego mind. Now there is a very small chance the voices are a negative spirit and you can spot them easily if what they're saying comes from a fear, judgment or hateful space. Ask them to leave. Remember, they do not have dominion in this world. You are always in control. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you establish your connection to your guide. Like always, if you like content like this, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when a new video gets uploaded. I do upload about one video a week on a Monday. Please comment on your experiences or if you have questions, I'd love to hear from you. I love to read the comments and I always respond. So much love to you all and ta-ta for now.